What is up guys, Luke Deutschland here with another video. If you guys like my videos, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And remember guys, this year if I do not post a YouTube video every single day at the very end of the year, I will be giving one lucky subscriber $1,000 cash. I will personally fly out and give it to you. That being said guys, the only other way to win this prize is to help me get to 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. It's kind of a far-fetched goal I think for my first year, but hey, you never know. I think it could happen, so... I believe anything can happen at any time, so I'm really going to try and go for it. And I'm also trying to give you guys a video a day just to help you guys out and give you guys knowledge and business stuff and then talk about phone flipping, uh, being that's my main industry or niche that I do deal in and then consulting as well. So that being said, guys, if I don't post a video each day, remember, guys, make sure you guys subscribe because it's for subscribers only, but I will be paying out $1,000 cash if I don't end up posting a video a day for the entirety of this year. That being said, guys, let's jump into today's video. Today, we're going to be talking about scammers. And basically, what happened early this morning, guys, is I almost got scammed. Now, it was kind of funny because of the fact that I didn't expect this person to be a scammer. And what I mean by that is the person, you know, was very detailed, very communicative. And, you know, everything seemed like, uh, you know, it was going to work out good. The deal did seem, uh, you know, pretty good in favor on my end. However, I really did not see this person coming at me and trying to scam me. Um, however, I would kind of like to display the details and talk about the details here with you guys. I would like to get the text messages and show you guys, but I'm not really sure what's all going to show up on my phone. So for that being said, I am going to kind of explain it to you guys, but I just kind of want to show you uh, how long this deal went for. So I've actually been talking to this guy since yesterday and the scam almost happened this morning and it would have been a very terrible scam had it have happened to me. But basically the deal was is somebody messaged me and I'm just going to kind of go through my phone here a little bit so I can talk to you guys about this. So basically the guy messages me and he says, hey, I'm interested on your ad on OfferUp. Now, why we're talking about scams and OfferUp is because I want to let you guys know something that OfferUp, LetGo, 5Mile, and all these other apps that may be popular in your area are a really great place to advertise your phone flipping business or maybe perhaps other business where you buy and resell things or offer a service. The only thing that I don't like about OfferUp, guys, and I have kind of realized is that the leads from OfferUp sometimes don't come in as genuine as other advertising platforms. And the reason being is it just seems like there's a lot of scammers out there. I don't know if the verification systems are just worse than that of Facebook or Craigslist, but there is a lot of scammers out there on OfferUp and LetGo on 5 Miles. So you guys have to be careful of that. So this person seemed pretty genuine. Uh, they said, I'm interested in your ad on OfferUp. I said, sure, what did you have for sale? You know, everything's going good at this point. Obviously, we're only two texts deep, but let's keep talking here. So the seller says, I have a laptop. I need some cash for a phone. I paid $1,100 for it, but I'll let it go for $700. So it's pretty much textbook at this point. Pretty easy ongoing conversation. So I say, hmm, kind of stalled the conversation out a little bit, not showing as much interest because this person is highly engaged right now in the texting conversation. When it comes to texting, you guys want the seller to actually engage more in you and to pursue you. So that way you end up getting the item for the price that you want. If you guys over pursue somebody in texting, you're going to scare the customer off and end up not getting the deal at all. So I said, hmm, period. And then I said, can you send me the specs on the laptop and some pictures so I can see how much I can offer you? So he sends me some pictures, beautiful laptop. It's a Dell 13, looks very new. It's also a notebook and a touchscreen. I can tell because it folds over and I can see the touchscreen on it. So he sends me a couple pictures. Then he sends me the specs. Now here's where I get really excited. So he says 16 gigabytes of RAM, 13 inch display, Dell 13, 7,000 premium edition flagship customized. So this is a really expensive laptop guys. Now this laptop brand new uh, very well could have been uh, around a $1,500 laptop. He said he paid $1,100 for it, which means he could have bought it used. So it's turning out really nice now. So I said, okay, everything looks good. Can you send me that link or the model number? So this guy sends me a direct link in everything to this laptop, sends me an Amazon link. I mean, this thing's worth pretty good money. And he said, here's a picture of one of the games that I play running on it. So he actually sends me a picture. However, this picture was a picture of a picture. He did a really good job making sure that there wasn't pixels in the picture. And so at that point, basically, I'm assuming at this point, guys, that everything looks legitimate. You know, everything is looking good. And, you know, his story is seeming legitimate. And, you know, it shouldn't have any problems. 
So I asked one more question, does it have a graphics card or just internal graphics? This is kind of something important guys, when you guys are appraising laptops, make sure you guys go in great detail with the seller just because of the fact that there are so many different model variations when it comes to laptops. So we're scrolling through the text here and I said, mind if I call you quick, I'm driving, I apologize. Now this wasn't actually a truth, what this is, is typically in my course I advise course members to try and get the customer on the phone to see if you can sense tone in their voice because at this point I was kind of skeptical just because of the fact that the way the conversation was going it was going too well and so he says I can't call just text me when you get a chance so not a big deal so I stole for a little bit longer because I want to keep them engaged with me I want them to be desperately wanting to sell their device to me so I said have the box and original charger I'm keeping it short at this point guys the seller says no box original charger yep has a carrying case though I said I could likely do $400 cash on it Probably going to sell this laptop, guys, for around eight to $900 or more. It's a very nice laptop. So I said, I looked around. It's a nice laptop, but I'd have to resell it. That work for you can meet tonight. If not, I offer free price match guarantee. Take your laptop to GameStop or any other competition or pawn shop, and I will match them and beat them by 10% or more, and I will pick the device up from you at the location that you get a quote at. So that basically, guys, tells the customer that I will beat any price guaranteed, and I will also pick the device up in which you get this price quote at to make it completely convenient for you. So the guy says, or seller says, I can't meet till Monday morning at 730, but let me think about it. So I said, sure, no problem. If your schedule's busy, I can do a free pickup at location, wherever, period. So the guy says, yeah, schedule is pretty tight, but I think you have a deal. I said, sounds good. Well, you seem like a stand-up fellow. Usually don't pick up devices unless it's at a public place, but let me know. I asked the guy for his name. He said his name. And he says, I like meeting at public places, so either way shouldn't be a problem. I said, great, my name's Luke. Just let me know and have an awesome rest of your weekend. He says, yeah, you too. So I leave it at that. Real nice, short, simple. Later that night, guys, at 9.26 p.m., he texts me desperately, okay, I'm sorry to bug you, but I need a phone. Do you have any phones you would trade for the laptop, or could you give me $600 for the laptop so I can get one? So at this point, we already kind of agreed at $400, possibly. Now he comes back at me a couple hours later asking for $600, and he says, I don't care if it has a crack in it or something, I just need a phone. So he wants to either trade for the laptop at this point for a used phone or a phone or for me to give him $600 cash for it. I said, later, what phone company do you need it for? He says, any phone company. It will be used on Wi-Fi and my work will be providing a number on an app. So I said, okay, I could trade you an iPhone 7 like new without box or maybe a few others said I need a plus size. So the conversation goes on. We talk back and forth. I don't want to bore you guys too much um, just because of the fact that I know you can't really see the text. Well, there you can. You can see a little bit. So actually, this is a perfect opportunity to tell you guys where I kind of called this guy on his bluff. And this is something you guys have to constantly do. So I'm actually really glad that I held the phone up and you guys can see the text. So right here, the guy said, just let me know. And he's bluffing here. He says, I just stopped in Hopefully the camera will be focused here on the screen. The guy says, I just stopped in at GameStop quick and because the laptop is two weeks old, perfect condition, comes with wireless keyboard and mouse, they offered me $6.15. So I was very surprised at this offer at this point. I said, okay, calling his bluff. I'll meet you at GameStop. Like I said, hard to appraise without seeing in person. If they are offering that, seems a bit much. But I said, if that's true and that's the case, I'll do $630 on it. So here's where his bluff got called and where he lied. He says, I won't be able to meet at GameStop. If you have a 7 Plus, I'll trade you for the laptop when I have a Fitbit, a Wii with a bunch of games and a portable TV because I'm broke and desperately need a phone, he says. So this is where it starts to get interesting. So I called his bluff where he tries to tell me, he tries to tell me, right, that he can't meet at GameStop, yet he just got a quote from GameStop. And he said that he stopped there, not that he called them over the phone. So you see, guys, when you guys are dealing with people that are trying to scam you, you guys have to be smart in the text messages. Now, I want to tell you where this leads up to where I potentially could have got scammed big time. So I'm not going to bore with you with any more text. The guy sent me a bunch more pictures of stuff that he was going to trade me, etc. Sends me pictures of him resetting the laptop. Now, this laptop that he sent me was the exact same one that he brought me. However, this laptop has many different variations in which you can customize. And when we met up, he was on a very tight time schedule to get to work, which I totally understand. However, he tried basically 
getting the phone from me, we ended up doing a trade. I ended up actually trading him a brand new 6S Plus that I purchased from Walmart for, I believe it was $199 is what I purchased it for. And then I bought a case for $20, right? So he tried taking the phone from me in the case before I got to pull away completely. Now, before I gave him the phone and everything, he was basically trying to get it from me and just, he kind of almost threw the stuff into my car, which is kind of crazy. He kind of just handed it to me before I gave him anything. And he's like, okay, 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 can I get the phone? I gotta go, I gotta get to work. He's trying to like fast pressure sale me through it, which isn't gonna work on me because I teach sales for a living. And he then tells me, you know, he's gotta get to work, he's gotta get to work. And I'm like, just hold on one moment, my man. I said, I gotta take this laptop out and just verify something real quick. Now on most laptops guys, especially if they're new, there's gonna be a sticker on the bottom right or the bottom left when you open the laptop up and it's gonna say what the processor is. There's gonna be an official sticker from Intel or whatever processor it has, maybe it's AMD. So I open up the laptop, all is looking good until I look over in the bottom right corner. The laptop did not have an i7 in it. The laptop had a i3 seventh generation in it. So this guy basically completely lied about the specs in the laptop. Now the good thing for me is I knew off the top of my head, just by the laptop that it was, that this laptop was worth about $300. So since I only paid $220 basically for the case and the phone, and there was also a Wii in the bag with the cords and then a couple of different Fitbits and Fitbit wristbands, I knew I was probably gonna make $200 profit on the deal, probably close to that, maybe a little bit less after fees and shipping. So I still did the deal. Now here's the kicker. I felt bad that I couldn't deliver this guy an iPhone 7 or a 7 Plus because Walmart was actually out of them. And that was a godsend because of the fact that I almost purchased a brand new 7 Plus and was going to trade it to this guy. Instead, I ended up showing up with a 6S Plus and I apologized to him and I said, I couldn't get you a 7 Plus. So I brought you a 6S Plus, a brand new case, and I took out with withdrawn from my account. I said, I withdrew $100 cash for you and I'll give that to you on top. And of course, he was like, oh, sure, that sounds great. Before I gave him the $100 cash and after I gave him the phone and felt a little comfortable with him, that all took this all took place in about two minutes, but I'm kind of trying to give you guys a little background on what happened. Then at that point, I said, before I give you the $100, man, can I just, I just want to check this laptop out really quick. So I opened it up and that's when I figured everything out. And at that point, I told him, I'm sorry, but I cannot give you $100 cash extra for this laptop and this Wii based on that it is not exactly what you told me. And you know, I, I powered it on and everything, flipped it open, everything was fine that way. But I said, these are not the specs that you described to me. So I went a little step further after that, completed the deal. Then I did text the seller after and I said, look man, I said, you don't have to try and play me like this. And I said, I'm gonna make a YouTube video off of this. And I'm not gonna say your name or anything or give your phone number out. But I said, don't be trying to do that to people because I said, had this been a consumer and you scammed some family man or maybe some single mom or something, you could have really ruined somebody's month. In fact, you probably could have ruined the rest of their year by basically jipping them for a thousand dollars because that's basically what it was. This laptop was supposed to be a thirteen hundred dollar laptop. And he tries selling me a laptop that's worth three hundred. Now, what I do feel bad about, and this is where things get kind of sticky. Um, you know, we did. I didn't really talk to the seller much more after that, but the seller actually did write me two long messages actually a few hours ago. I'm assuming after he got done with the work. And he says, look, man, I didn't try and play you. I bought it and used it like new. He says, I'm not that geeky and I don't know about tech stuff. He said, I actually bought it straight off of Facebook because I don't know much about it. And the people I bought it from actually have been dealt with and I reported them and they blocked me after I bought it. So I feel bad for the guy, but at the same time, he did lie to me about stopping at GameStop and having a quote for $600. Now, that's where you got to ask yourself, did he really get scammed or is he just trying to, you know, look out for himself and make himself look better? I don't really care. I'll probably never see the kid again. Maybe I will. Maybe this time he'll have better stuff for sale. I don't know. But the kid looked like he was about 15, but I believe he was about 18. So, you know, he was going to work and everything, but it's just like, you know, looked like a nice young guy, had no idea that he was going to try and pull a fast one on me. Um, in my professional opinion, I'd say he definitely was trying to scam me. You know, he's probably hoping that I was just some, you know, know-it-all or some guy that just didn't know anything at all and just thought that, you know, he would kind of get that right above and past me with his enthusiasm and his urgency to get to work and do the deal super quick. So that being said, guys, 
Had I have traded him the seven plus or had I have given him the 600 cash, I could have very well easily lost three to $400 today and that can happen. So I just kind of wanted to touch base on something that happened today to me. Um, luckily, you know, I saw through it and that's, you know, that that's what you get when you've been doing this for five, six years. Um, it, it, it just kind of comes to you naturally to check into these things. You never trust people just because of the fact that stuff like this can happen. And, you know, you never know. It could be the friendliest, nicest face you ever see or the youngest kid you ever see. And they're just out to scam you. You never really know what somebody's true intentions are, unfortunately, when it comes to the reselling business. But that being said, guys, I really hope you guys liked this video. Be careful, guys, of offer up and let go and five mile and all these other apps because like i said sometimes the leads that they produce guys just aren't as quality as the other platforms you gotta watch out for people that are you know out there just trying to basically scam you or take advantage of you or make you break even because you know you're in business to make money so you can't be out there you know getting screwed left and right from people so it's just kind of something you guys kind of got to watch out for. Just make sure you guys never get rushed through a deal or get pressure sailed, especially by the person that you're supposed to be selling. So that being said, guys, I hope this kind of, you know, stuff is beneficial to you. This little play by play. I hope this wasn't too long for you. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a detailed idea on what happened today and just kind of calling customers bluffs and, you know, how not to get scammed. Just make sure you're always checking over stuff and use this video as an example and a reminder that a scam can happen to anyone, anytime, no matter how big you are, no matter how experienced you are. Um, you know, sometimes you can get caught off guard when you get too comfortable and it's just something to really watch out for and make sure you take your time when you're appraising stuff. Try and be fast, of course, and courteous to the customer, but above all, do not get screwed over yourself uh, just because of the fact that the customer is, you know, sitting there hyperventilating and saying they gotta go to work, when in reality, in this case today, this kid was just trying to do that so that way I wouldn't take the time to check out the laptop and see through it. So that being said, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.